in the beginning. Our story starts when we see the heart of God revealed as he creates, speaking life out of nothing, laying the foundation of his creation, his very words, the causation of every living thing on the earth. Night and day, land and sea, stars and skies, bird and beast, he worked his way from the least of these things until he reached his final peace. He formed man from the dust and entrusted him with the care of the garden and all creatures, great and small. But the story took a darker turn, like summer during the fall. You see, the man and woman turned to doubt by believing the lie that came out of the mouth of the serpent. And letting these lies cloud their judgment, they took the fruit of the knowledge and kick-started their descent to the grave. And while the fruit of the tree looked good for food, they were in for a rude awakening when their shame came and they shifted the blame from one to the other. So God cast them out of Eden to work the land with their sweat and their bleeding until the day when they'd return to the dust from whence they came. But praise be to God, that wasn't the last word. Because although their sin left us guilty and even our own righteousness was filthy, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Son of God came down to die the death that we deserve as recompense for our sinful nature. You see, our sins demanded payment, confirmed by this statement that the wages of sin is death, but his free gift of eternal life is given, allowing our debt to be completely forgiven because of the victory of Christ who died in our place and rose again the third day. Because even though his broken body was laid in the tomb and his disciples cowered in the upper room, feeling assured of their doom, the path to God was being paved so our fellowship with him could resume. What had been done by believing the lies of the serpent was now undone by Christ, tearing the curtain and making a way for us to be with God for certain. There is no condemnation for those found in Christ. For by his blood we are saved from the wrath that we deserve. Once slaves to sin, now the living God we serve. Yes, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings cannot be found in his grave. His residence there only lasted three days, and his victory shows that he is worthy of all praise. Holy is his name. All glory and honor and power and fame belong to the risen Christ who has come to save. So stand with us now, lift your voices and hands in praise. Let our worship clearly tell that Jesus Christ is alive and well. <laughs> 